Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. Now previous two videos have uh, been making use of a spectrum analyzer uh, and we've been using this RF uh, demo kit board to get a bit of practice in using what can be some very complicated settings on spectrum analyzers and hopefully um, that's been useful and made some sense uh, but what about if you haven't got a spectrum analyzer now I appreciate these days there's plenty of tiny SA's about which are very good indeed but if you've not got one um, is there anything you can do well if you've got a oscilloscope uh, and a signal generator the answer to that question is yes so let's have a look at uh, two methods that allow you to characterize the shape of some of these filters and the first one involves using the Siglent oscilloscope attached to a signal generator so let's now go and straight away and have a look at that okay so here's the screen of my um, Siglent oscilloscope and this particular model has uh, a bode plot function uh, you enter that here by where it says bode plot 2 in the utilities menu um, it gives this, this screen here and I've already set it up um, so if we just look quickly at config here we've got um, uh, a sweep uh, centered on 11 megahertz with a 3 megahertz span and I've picked 100 points so we'll go back to the screen ready to start now this scope has the ability to control a signal generator via USB now it's obviously meant to be a signal siglent uh, signal generator I've got the SDG 1032X which is a, up, up to 30 megs uh, signal generator but I know people have actually managed to get um, this working with other signal generators as well now I've done a video in the past on how to connect up the signal generator so I'm not going to do that now but um, I've got the demo kit going into channel 2 uh, and I've got here is the the reference frequency from the signal generator now this bode plot uh, produces two results it produces um, phase on channel 1 the red and uh, amplitude on channel 2 which is the purple so I'm going to start the run like so and it's now uh, causing the signal generator to uh, actually step 100 steps through that uh, frequency range which I talked about now it looks a little bit confusing here at the moment that's because the scope doesn't know what to expect and so it will auto scale as the um, information comes in for both phase and amplitude so that's just uh, just about 50 um, measurements there and uh, you can see the purple trace already has produced uh, a trace which looks uh, more than like um, uh, a bandpass filter which is indeed what we're expecting to see so we'll clean that up in a minute I'm going to I'm going to pause the trace when it gets to the end there so we'll stop it there and I'm just going to uh, go into the display menu I'm going to choose phase and I'm going to reduce the scale of the phase and then I'm going to use the reference level function to get the phase off the screen just to tidy things up so hopefully what you can now see this is the amplitude plot taken um, uh, with the phase plot removed and we have indeed got um, a sweep uh, 11 megahertz is there and so yeah we've got that sweep centered on 10.7 um, megahertz so that is another way um, to to look at the response of a filter uh, using a scope if you've got uh, this kind of facility available can't speak for scopes other than the Siglent but uh, yeah so there we go that's that's the example for you and um, I think it works rather well okay well there's the signal generator producing uh, a bode plot which looks suspiciously like the 10.7 megahertz band plus filter which is good uh, but what about if you've not got fancy oscilloscope um, with the ability to talk through USB to a signal generator? Well, still possible to get some results. Okay, they're not scientific, and I realise there's going to be people who want to criticise me for this method, but it does work. I've done um, videos on this kind of thing before. When I used to have a hand-tech oscilloscope, got some quite good results producing bowed plots with that. 
Um, obviously you lose some of the ability to, to synchro the trace but you can nevertheless produce something that shows you how the filter looks. So uh, let's um, go and have a look at how that arrangement works using the Zoe handheld oscilloscope and multimeter. Okay so I've got the Zoe oscilloscope here and I've got it running on a very slow time base actually 2.5 seconds um, and I've got a sweep set on the frequency generator of between 8 and 12 megahertz and I've got the 10.7 megahertz bandpass filter in circuit so I hope you can um, see that as the sweep goes across here um, at some point and obviously that's the bit that we can't synchro on this simple setup at some point uh, the sweep will cross the uh, pass frequency of the filter and hopefully the scope will begin to show it now at the moment it's just off center there um, hopefully sometime during the next sweep it's going to uh, get somewhere near that uh, so as the sweep begins again we should be approaching the band pass at some point yep there we go and so we've got that um, display uh, like so. So I'm going to just hold that for now and uh, I think the first thing to say is no it's not scientific but let's take that um, screen grab or at least we'll take one like it and let's have a look at that and see how it compares to what we were seeing on the spectrum analyzer. So I'll save that and uh, now we'll, um, we'll do a bit of analysis. Okay, so here's that screen grab from the Zoe oscilloscope and just for completeness sake here's a picture of the settings I've got using the sweep generator. So we've got a 8 to 12 megahertz and a sweep time of 30 seconds. If you want to be pedantic it's 30.01, don't know where the 01 came from, but it's about half a minute. So it's a long slow sweep of 4 megahertz. And the time base on the scope is two and a half seconds. So where exactly that um, trace is going to appear obviously just depends on um, the speed of the time base and the uh, where the sweep has got to in that 30 second interval. And why have I picked those two uh, settings? Um, well I've just done it by trial and error to get uh, a reasonable looking uh, uh, plot. That's, that's all it is. So you know it's not scientific by any stretch of the imagination. So um, now let's uh, isolate that bit of the trace and make it a bit larger. It's uh, not a particularly high resolution image you get off the scope so apologies for the slight pixelation. And what I'm now going to do is blank out the bottom half of the display so it looks a little bit more like um, a bode plot because the scope is obviously plotting um, uh, voltage rather than um, frequency but because of the slow time base what it's actually plotting uh, is is actually frequency against time right, bizarrely it's not plotting it directly but you'll see in a moment so now let's look at the bone plot that we looked at earlier in the video uh, there it is and hopefully you can see that we have got something that purports to be similar now I appreciate you can't take any accurate measurements from this um, this method uh, which is why I say it's not scientific but if it's all you've got um, then yes uh, you can actually look at the shape or the response curve of the filter um, and actually uh, that might be useful or interesting and we've not all got access to lots and lots of nice kit so let's just for completeness sake look at what the spectrum analyzer made of it this is a spectrum analyzer taken from uh, the previous video um, and we're looking at uh, the same filter there which is a 10.7 megahertz band plus filter so hopefully you can see that we did get um, a meaningful result uh, albeit um, a great deal more crude from that method okay well there you've got two methods to have a look at these filters using uh, oscilloscopes and signal generators and hopefully uh, that's been useful 
Um, first method was definitely scientific, uh, second method less so, but nonetheless it does allow you to, to see the shape of, of the filters from, from the RF demo board, but if it's a filter that you'd made it will at least allow you to see that uh, it was doing something uh, along the lines um, that you might expect it to do. So yeah, it's got some potential use and we haven't all got loads of fancy kit uh, to do things with so hopefully that's encouraged you to perhaps have a go uh, no matter how modest your uh, your resources are uh, have a go play with it enjoy yourself and uh, hopefully you'll learn something along the way and um, if you've liked the video please click like you can click like even if you haven't liked it um, it actually helps the channel um, be great if you could subscribe and hopefully look forward to seeing you on the next video